Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Maker. It's a beautiful day to show you how to create a heart explosion box on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So explosion boxes are one of the most fun gifts that you can give. Now, if you aren't familiar with them, an explosion box is a paper box that explodes open when you lift the lid. Okay, it doesn't so much as explode as fall open when you open when you lift up the lid. The sides fall down, revealing all of the fun inside. Explosion boxes make great gifts because you can put little notes inside, photos, even cash. And this is the heart explosion box. And as you can see, there's hearts at the edges. My first explosion box was such a big hit. We've had so many requests for other explosion box and I made this one for you. And I think it is so fun. Now, don't worry, these boxes might look complicated, but they aren't hard. They just take some time to make. And I'm gonna make it as easy as possible for you in this tutorial. Now, one of the best things about my explosion box design is that it's just made of paper and glue. Now, my favorite way to make explosion boxes is to use pads of coordinating cardstock, especially ones just like this double-sided stack. They're very cool. A designer has already picked out the colors for you, and it's really easy. And to make this four-layer explosion box, you need 17 sheets of 65 or 85 pound cardstock, the 12 by 12 size, just like this. And if you use a pad of the coordinating cardstock like this, then you already know the papers go together. It really doesn't get any easier. Now you'll also want an adhesive. The big question is, which one? Which adhesive works best for explosion boxes? Options are tacky glue, hot glue, and even double-sided sticky tape. I'm gonna try all of these adhesives on our explosion boxes and let you know which one works best for this project at the end of this video. Now, I used a Cricut cutting machine to cut out my cardstock along with the fine point blade and a green standard grip cutting mat. But you can also use a craft knife or even a pair of scissors along with the printable PDF that I'm including in this tutorial. I also recommend a scoring stylus or scoring wheel as it's gonna make it so much easier to fold and assemble your explosion box. And that's all you need. Well, other than a little time, of course, expect this project to take most of an afternoon or an evening to finish. All right, so let me show you where you can find the free heart explosion box pattern and templates, as well as the printable diagram for your various pieces and layers. And then I will show you how to cut and assemble your explosion box. Step one, get my heart explosion box template. Go to jennifermaker.com slash 280 and look for the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the template by searching the page for design 280. Here you'll see that you can either download files and patterns by clicking this link here or you can click this project link here to open the project up right in Cricut Design Space. The Cricut Design Space project link will open a version of this pattern right in Cricut Design Space for you. Just click Edit a Copy. Everything in this file is free. There is no cost to use it. And all of the score lines are pre-attached to the base layers to make it really easy to use. All you need to do is click Make It. Super easy. And you can skip right to step three. If you don't have a scoring tool or you just prefer to set your score lines on your own, you'll want to download the files from my library. And regardless of which link you use, I recommend you still download the file here because there is a printable diagram inside the zip folder that contains a picture of every piece of this template and its name. This is super useful for keeping track of all the pieces during assembly and understanding which piece it is that we're putting together when we go through this tutorial. Also in the zip folder, I've included two SVG files. The first is in the folder named No Scoring Tool Needed. This template includes dashed cut lines, which act as score lines to help with folding and assembly. The second version is in the folder named Scoring Tool or Stylus Needed. 
This version includes solid lines that can be changed to score lines, and it does require a scoring tool. I will go over both versions in this tutorial so you can decide which one you might like to use. We'll start with the no scoring tool needed version. Upload the file to Cricut Design Space. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how to unzip and upload files. Step 2. Prepare your explosion heart design files. Here's what the first version that needs no scoring tool looks like on the Cricut Design Space canvas. You can zoom out a bit by clicking on the minus sign in the lower left corner of the canvas. This design contains four boxes and four lids, with various pockets and envelopes and note card inserts. All of the pieces are stacked on top of each other right now. Let's click Ungroup to take a closer look at each layer. The dashed lines are actually small cut lines. Your machine will cut along those lines that indicates where you will fold your cardstock. This is the quickest and easiest way to make this project since a scoring tool is not required. Everything is already set to cut and all you need to do is click make it and choose your material and cut settings. That's it. You can now skip to step three. But let me show you the other version on a new canvas in the event you prefer to use a scoring tool or stylus with these files. The version in the score tool needed folder includes solid lines that can be changed to score lines and attached to their corresponding layers. The version you pick is totally up to you. Some people prefer this version because it has a more polished look since the folded areas include score lines instead of dashed cut lines. Score lines are smoother typically. This template does take a few more steps to get it ready to cut. First, delete the layer with the instructions, the one with the warning icon next to it in the Layers panel. You want to get rid of that. To do that, just highlight it in the Layers panel and click Delete. Next, select the design on your canvas and click Ungroup at the top of the Layers panel. Then pull the groups apart so we can see all four on the canvas. Next, we will ungroup each one of these groups, starting with the blue group. Select it and click Ungroup just like we did before. Next, click on the green group and ungroup that and do the same for the yellow and orange and the red group. With everything separated, we can now select the solid lines in the Layers panel and change those to score lines and attach them to their corresponding layers. Here's how to do that. We're going to start with the blue group again. Starting at the top of the Layers panel and staying within the blue group, scroll down and look for layers that look like nothing more than empty, uncolored lines. Those are the score lines. Another way you can identify the score lines in this project is to look for two layers that are in a small group by themselves. So for an example, this one and this one. That's the score line at the top and the base layer below it. So once you find a score line, you'll want to select it in the Layers panel. Make sure it's highlighted, and then go to the Operation menu at the top, click on it, and scroll down and choose Score. That will change the solid line to a dashed line. Now, this is very important. You must attach the score line to the base layer, which is immediately below it. There are a couple ways to do this. One is to hold down your shift key and click on the layer below it, so both layers are highlighted. The other way you can do it is to simply click on the layer right above the new score line, which will highlight that small group. Either way will work. What you want to do then is click attach at the bottom of the layers panel. And this is important because if you don't do this, the Cricut Design Space won't know which layer to put the score line on. Repeat this process for all the score lines with this blue group. There are a total of nine that need to be changed to score and attached to their base layer. You will notice each time you attach the score line to its corresponding layer, that group will move to the top of the layers panel. 
You can double check to make sure you didn't miss any by starting at the top and counting to make sure there are nine attached groups of blue layers. Once you finish the blue group, move on to the green group. You will notice something different with a few of the score line layers in this group. Part of the layer is colored in. That's because the lines are closed to form a shape, and when that happens, the software colors in that section. Once we change the operation to score, you will notice the colored part goes away. This group contains seven score lines that need to be changed and attached. There are also seven score lines included in the yellow and orange group. Keep following the same steps to change and attach these layers. Now this may seem confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it starts to make more sense and the process becomes easier. When you get to the red group, there's another layer that looks a bit confusing at first. This layer looks like a solid pentagon, but it's actually a score layer. Again, it's filled in because the lines are closed. Once we change its operation to score, it turns the dashed lines just like the other ones. And we'll attach it to its base as well. When all is said and done, you should have a total of 31 attached layers. Here's how to check. Starting at the top of the layers panel, you will see the first group titled Attach. There's a down arrow to the left. Click on that to minimize the group into one layer. If all the correct lines were changed to score and attached, you can count each color group as they minimize. If you follow this tutorial step by step, you should have eight red groups, seven yellow orangish groups, seven green groups, and nine blue groups. Everything below those attached groups are all the extra cut pieces that do not include score lines. We can also check this on the next screen. Make sure the right machine is selected and click Make It. Step 3. Cut your cardstock. No matter which way you got your heart explosion box to this stage, you should see 17 mats on the Prepare screen. Now, if there are more than 17, you may have missed a score line. If so, you will probably see a black mat with lines on it. If you do, just click cancel and go back to the canvas and retrace your steps to attach that group. Now to make this super easy for you, I colored the layers in rainbow order, so from red to purple. That's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. That's rainbow order. I did that so that the pieces will all cut in order from box one to box two to box three to box four. This is because Cricut Design Space for desktop always sorts your layers by color into the color mats. It will put white first, and then black, and then all of the colors in rainbow order. This only works its way on Cricut Design Space for desktop, though, just so you know. To learn more about cutting mat order and how these colors work together, see my blog post over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Mat Order. I will show you how to make this explosion box with solid colored cardstock that matches the color in the design file and in the principal diagram. That way you always know what color I'm working with in this video. Now the solid rainbow colors are fun, but I actually prefer the way the project looks using double-sided pattern cardstock if you can find it. So if you also want to use pattern cardstock or just want to use different colors than I have, you can keep this really easy for yourself by not changing any of the colors in the design file. So don't change anything in Cricut Design Space color-wise because then this will preserve the cutting order. Then you can just put whatever colors or patterns of cardstock you want on your cutting mats as you go along. Remember, the color in Design Space does not have to match what you put on your machine mat. It can be any color you want. If everything looks good, click back on the first mat and click Continue. Select Medium Cardstock and More Pressure to ensure a nice clean cut. If you are making the version that requires a scoring tool, be sure to select the right tool. You can stick with the single scoring wheel or click Edit Tools and choose a scoring stylus. It's completely up to you. 
I like to use the scoring stylus because I can cut and score at the same time instead of having to switch out my blade for the scoring wheel. Make sure the scoring stylus is in clamp A and the fine point blade is in clamp B and you are ready to go. If you are using the design with preset dashed cut lines, you don't need any scoring tool at all. Just double check that your fine point blade is in clamp B and you are good to go. So then just place your material that you want for your first box onto your cutting mat, load it into your machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. Now here's a tip for those of you with double-sided patterned cardstock. Put the side that you want to appear on the outside of your box face down on your cutting mat. That way your score lines will be on the side of the cardstock that is inside the box, which is where you want it to be. It'll fold easier. If you didn't do that, it's no big deal. It's just a little trick that helps. Now when the cut is finished, unload your mat, flip your mat over onto your surface, and peel your mat away from the cardstock to avoid ripping or curling your paper. Now just continue cutting all 17 sheets and until you're finished. And note that these are that those very light colored layers that you see in the design file can all be cut on white cardstock or whatever color you want. But white cardstock is what we used here as those are all the note cards and you'll probably want to write messages on them. So white works really well for that. And here's an idea. If you don't feel like handwriting special notes on the white note cards in this project, you can have your Cricut do the work for you. Read my Cricut writing and pen tutorial for tips, tricks, and font ideas at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut writing. Now, as you cut each layer and take them off the mats, put them in stacks by box number and just refer to your principal diagram. But basically, um, box one cuts first, then box two, then three, then four, right? Um, but just refer to that diagram if you're ever unsure which pieces go with which box. And remember, if you don't change the colors, everything is going to cut in the proper order and make it really easy for you. Step four, assemble your explosion box. Let's assemble our first box. Take the main box one piece that looks like this. It is the largest piece. And begin folding the four box sides on the score lines with the inside of the box face up. I am using a scraper tool to get my folds nice and sharp. Push it on the corner heart as you bring the two sides of the box together. Flip to the inside of the box and fold on the corner score. Repeat this process for the remaining three corners of the box piece. This is what your box number one looks like with the folds all in place. Now take the half heart corner pieces and begin gluing them to the heart shaped corners of the box piece. Please note that the part of the half heart with the sharper point at the top, as shown here, is the inside part of the heart. So you want to put those sharper points facing each other. Otherwise, it'll just kind of go on there a little wonky. That's all. Now add glue to a half heart corner piece and press it into a corner of the box piece. Add glue to the next heart shape piece and place it next to the piece that you just did. And repeat this process for the remaining three corners. Now grab the square lid piece and fold the four sides of the lid. Add glue to the tab at the end of each side of the lid and place this tab under the adjacent lid side. Repeat this process for the remaining three corners of your lid. This is what the lid of box one looks like when it's all assembled. 
Now let's do the extras for box one. Take the five-sided note card piece with the heart flaps and begin folding each flap toward the inside of the piece. Glue the five small heart pieces to the end of each flap on the outside of the five-sided note. Grab the pentagon shaped piece. Add glue to one side of the piece and place it in the inside center of the five-sided note card. And to close the five-sided note card, fold one of the flaps inward and then fold the next three flaps down until you get to the last flap. While lifting up on the first flap, slightly bend and slide the fifth tab under the first tab. Your five-sided note card should look like this. Now add glue to the back of that note card and place it on one of the inner sides of the box piece. It doesn't matter which one you get to pick. Now let's do a pocket. Grab a square pocket piece and begin folding the three tabs toward the inside of the piece. Add glue to the three tabs of the pocket. Align the pocket to one side of the box and glue in place. Repeat these steps and add the other two pockets. This is what your box should look like. Next, grab the framed note card and matching note face. Add glue to the white card and place it on the framed note card. Then just insert the card into the slanted pocket. And now let's do the folding note card. Take the long rectangular piece that looks like this and fold on the score lines like an accordion. Glue a white note card face to each of the four panels. And then fold the note card flat and insert it into the pocket. Finally, let's do the accordion note card piece that looks like this. Begin folding on the diagonal score lines towards the inside of the note card. This is what one side of the piece looks like with the two diagonal folds. Next, fold the piece toward the outside on the last score line, which runs between the two hearts. Your folded accordion note card should look like this. Now just glue the three white note faces to the note card. And to close the note card, begin folding one side down as you push the heart-shaped pieces sides inward, and then repeat on the other side. When done, place the finished accordion note card into the last pocket. And that is box one. And of course, to be really clear, you don't have to do all of these things. I'm just explaining how to do them all if you want to. All right, so that's everything for box one. Let's do box two now. Take the main box two piece that looks like this. It is the second largest piece and begin folding the four box sides on the score lines with the inside of the box face up. You will assemble this box and lid exactly as you did the first box. This is what the box two and its lid look like when it's all assembled. Now let's do the extras for box two. First, find the square note face and glue it to the framed note. 
Then the envelope piece that looks like this, almost like a flower, um, you fold in each of the four sides towards the inside of the note card. Glue and place the note face to the center of the note card. To close this note card, fold down on the first three flaps and then fold and slide the fourth flap under the first flap. Isn't that cool? The note card should look like this when it's done. All right, now get envelope B, which has four flaps like this and fold the two side flaps towards the inside of the envelope. Add glue to the bottom edge of the longer flap. Fold up and press the two middle flaps. You now have an envelope. <laughs> Insert the corresponding white note card into the envelope. Grab the long rectangular piece and fold it as we did with the same piece for box one. Glue the four white notes to the note card. Your note card should look like mine. Now fold the two pocket pieces and glue them to the sides of box two. And insert the framed note card. Uh, add glue to the back of the envelope and glue that to the side of box two and add glue to the back of the last note card and place it on the last side of box two. This is what your finished box two will look like. And that's everything for box two. Let's do box three now. Take the main box three piece that looks like this. It is the third largest piece and begin folding the four box sides on the score lines with the inside of the box face up. You will assemble this box and lid exactly as you did the first two. This is what box three and its lid looks like when it's all assembled. Now let's do the extras for box three. Begin with the spiral note card, the piece that looks like this. Then turn the note card over and begin folding the four flaps down. And fold each of the score lines on the four flaps towards the outside of the note card. Now take the spiral note face and glue it to the center of the spiral note card. To close the spiral note card, fold down the first three flaps. Slide the fourth flap under the first flap. Add glue to the back of the note card and place it on one side of box three. It doesn't matter which side you get to pick. Now find the two pocket pieces. Fold the three tabs, glue, and place on the sides of box three. When that's done, find the corner note card and begin folding the four sides toward the inside of the note card. Fold the four corners towards the center of the note card. And fold up the tips of each of the four flaps. Open the corner note card and fold down two sides to the corner and manipulate the cardstock as I'm doing here. Continue folding the remaining three corners. Your corner note card should look like this so far, which is a little bit weird, I'll admit. But now you just glue the note face to the inside of the card and you glue on a heart to close the card and keep it shut. Add glue to the back of the note card and place it on the side of box three, the inside of box three, of course. 
Now look for the long rectangular piece. This is the folding note card and fold it as we did with the same piece for box one. Glue the four white notes to the note card and place the folded note card in the pocket in box three. This is what your box three will look like when you're all done. And that's everything for box three. So let's do the fourth and final box now. Take the main box four piece that looks like this and begin folding the four box sides on the score lines with the inside of the box face up. You will assemble this, this box and lid exactly as you did the other three. This is what the box four and its lid will look like when it's assembled. So take the four pocket pieces and fold, glue, and place each one inside of box four. Your box will look like this now. Glue the white note face to the note frame as we did with the previous boxes. Now look for the long rectangular piece, there should just be one of these left. This is the folding note card. And fold it as we did with the same piece for the previous boxes. Glue the four white note faces to the note card and place the note card in a pocket in box four. Now look for the heart envelope that looks like this and fold it in on the three score lines. Then glue two heart notes to the note card and push in the sides to close the note card. And now the very last note card piece, the origami envelope. Fold each end of it on the score line. And once that's done, fold each end of the two diagonal score lines. I'll close it by bringing in the sides of one end and then closing the sides of the other end. Place the note card in one of the pockets in box four. And that is it for your box four extras. Step five, glue the boxes together. This is the easy and fun part. <laughs> Open up box one. Put glue on the bottom of box two and then press it down in the center of the opened box one. Now open up box two. Find box three, put glue on the bottom of box three and press it down into the center of the open box two. Finally, open up box three. Get box four, put glue on the bottom of box four and press it down in the center of the open box three. And that's it, you are done. Isn't this so cool? Step six, show it off. Your super awesome heart explosion box is now finished and it's time to write your notes and add your personal touches for that someone special. Have fun pouring your love and affection into this special box. Now, I originally made this project using solid colored cardstock, as you can see over here. It was nice, however, I like the way the project looks using the double-sided pattern cardstock the best. You can decide for yourself which one you like by looking at how each of these looks and deciding what you like. It's completely up to you. Now, I get a lot of questions about colors and patterns and how you know what to put with what, right? And my, it looks like there's a lot going on here, right? If you use the stack of coordinating cardstock with patterns as I have, and it doesn't have to be this one, just a stack of things that go together, you don't have to worry about it because you already know that they go together. I highly recommend you do this because it will give you one less thing to worry about.
You may also be wondering if it would be all right to do less layers. Instead of doing every layer, you could do like every other layer, and whether or not that would look good. And yes, it totally would. That is a great way to save some time in this project. You should feel free to pick and choose only the layers and elements that you want in your heart explosion box. This is your project and you can do it any way you want. And I can't wait to see how you personalize this and make it work for you. Now, when we made the first heart explosion box, we tried a double-sided scrapbook adhesive tape. It did not hold well, however, and I do not recommend this type of adhesive. It just was not strong enough and the pieces were lifting off of the paper. We also tried a hot glue gun, but that ended up being really messy and too bulky at the seams. And then we tried the tacky glue, which was perfect. So the best type of adhesive for a paper project like this is tacky glue, just like this. It doesn't have to be this brand, just tacky glue. And I love that this heart explosion box template is so flexible. You can change the theme of the box just by switching up the cardstock. You can uh, get, make one for a birthday or Valentine's Day, Easter, graduation, Christmas, all of them work. This explosion box template is so easy to modify, making it one of my go-to gifts to give. Oh, and I have a fun little tip for a way to get your explosion box sides to fall open as soon as the lid is lifted. Stay to the very end of this video for my secret tip. Now, if you have any questions about making a hard explosion box, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters, where you can get advice and ideas and help and inspiration from crafters just like you. And if you are in need of a Cricut cutting machine, I give one away every month. You can enter for the chance to win your own Cricut cutting machine at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And I think that's it. Um, I have lots more projects and I can't wait to show them with you. But until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Okay, so do you wanna get your explosion box sides to fall open as soon as the lid is lifted? You can. So the trick is to just put some coins into the pockets of the boxes. The weight will help the sides of the box fall open as soon as the lid is lifted. Another way that you can encourage the sides to fall open is to keep the box flat and until like, right up until the moment that you're ready to give it to someone. That way, when the lid is lifted, the paper will naturally want to go back to its resting position, which is flat. Isn't that cool? So have lots of fun with this and share your photos. I cannot wait to see what you make. 